30 of this meeting of the Reading Municipal Light Department Board of Commissioners uh, is called to order and it is being videotaped at the arm of the office at 230 Ash Street in Reading for distribution to the community television stations in Reading, North Reading, Wilmington, and Linfield. The RMLD Board of Commissioners recognizes the importance of hearing public comment. We just ask that all questions or comments from the public be directed to the chair. Once recognized by the chair, all persons addressing the board shall state their name and address prior to speaking. Um, thank you very much. Um, Phil, would you serve as yep. secretary tonight? Yep. Thank you very much. Karen Herrick is here from FinCom, not Mark Doxer. Hello, Karen. Thank you for coming. And now we have the uh, first item is public comment, if anybody has any. Sounds like that's a no. Um, or liaisons, that would be Karen or others. Cab, we do not have a cab representative tonight. So I think that takes care of the initial round of no public comment. And with that, I think, unless there's anything else, we would proceed to the presentation of the 2018 audit. And Karen, do you want to have a preamble on the audit? Or um, we're not going to go into that. I'm just going to introduce Zach. Zach, you can um, take it from here. And just Sounds good. <laughs> usually Wendy does the uh, the little intro, but. OK. My name is Zach Ventross. I'm with Melanson Heath, the, the Reading Municipal Light Boards or excuse me, light departments outside auditors. Uh, we just performed a six month period uh, audit ending June, or excuse me, December 31st, 2018. Mm -hmm. As you know, the, bo the board recently moved from a June 30 year end to a December 31st year end, so we just performed a six month audit. So that's gonna be one of the big uh, differences to what you're used to seeing as a 12 months of information, whereas this one is just six months of information. Um, I think, you know, before I begin, the biggest takeaways that, that uh, I would like you to t have is the department has positive, uh, you know, operating results this year. They're in a, a strong financial position uh, that has a well-funded other post-employment benefits trust fund and that there was uh, no management letter uh, this uh, audit period uh, for the six-month audit. If I could, I'd like to have you turn to the first page after the table of contents. And this is the first page of the independent auditor's report. The department received a clean opinion, which is the, the best opinion you can receive from an independent auditing, auditing firm. And it's the same opinion that the department has received in prior years. Next, I'd like you to turn to page three, which is the first page of the management's discussion and analysis. The management's discussion and analysis takes place on pages three through six. And this is just a narrative summary of the results of operation and this section also uh, discusses any major financial areas. So instead of just simply sitting here and reading this to you, if we could, I'd like to turn to page seven, which is the statement of net position. And we'll discuss the, the same things on, uh, on page seven that are discussed here in the management's discussion and analysis. <coughs> so page seven is the management's discussion and analysis. And, and for the most part, um, the asset and liability figures comparing from December 31st to June 30th uh, are, are pretty comparable. I'd like to highlight just a couple of differences and a couple key items to bring to your attention. Uh, the first one is receivables net of a law un uncollectible, which is the second line item from the top. And that's actually a decrease of about $1.6 million from June 30th, 2018. And the reason for this is due to the calculation of the department's unbilled uh, receivables. During, um, when, when the department calculates their unbilled receivables in June, they're basing it off of bills that went out in July. And those July bills include a lot of AC use. So the revenues that the department received in, receive in July are typically a bit higher than the revenues that they receive in January. So due to that difference in, in, in revenues that are received from, January, uh, from July to January, there was a corresponding reduction in that estimation that receivable by the department. So that's why you're going to see that decrease in, the, in, that, in that figure. Moving forward, that figure will be a bit more comparable uh, from year to year when, when, uh, when comparing from December 31st to December 31st. The next figure I'd like to bring to your attention is the net pension liability. It's about two thirds of the way down the page and has a balance of 10781000 This represents the Reading Municipal Light Department's portion of the total unfunded liability of the Reading Contributory Retirement System. The department's portion of that total unfunded liability is about 29%, and uh, that the, the, the Contributory Retirement System is about 79% funded. 
what we see is the average in the Commonwealth is about 70%, so the contributory retirement system is, is above average in their funding of that uh, pension liability. Something to keep in, in mind when looking at this net pension liability figure of 10781000 is that the, dep uh, the department has placed some funds uh, set aside to help fund this liability. It's actually three numbers from the bottom. Under net position, you'll see pension trust. And that has a balance of 5878000 Now, unfortunately, according to accounting standards, that cannot reduce the liability that's presented uh, up above because it's not in the uh, control of the uh, contributory retirement system. But if you want to look at it as, you know, here's our net pension liability, we also have these funds that's been established and set aside for future funding of the, uh, 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 to the retirement system, that true liability is really about $4.9 million that has not been funded um, by the department. The next item I'd want to bring to your attention is the net OPEB liability. It's right below net pension liability and has a balance of 7374000 When the department moved from a, a June 30 year end to a December 31st year end, your actuaries produced new reports, and, and, and they produced those reports to, to be for the December 31st year end uh, to, to help with uh, <coughs> the presentation of that liability figure. And it was actually an increase of about $215,000 compared, compared to June. So again, very comparable figure from June 30 uh, to December 31st. If we could jump to page eight, which is the statement of revenues, expenses, and changes in net position. The figures here are only presented for uh, a six month period. So what we did as part of our auditing um, technique is, is we essentially doubled these figures up and compared it to what we normally would be auditing a, a 12 month period for uh, fiscal year 2018 and fiscal year 2017. And generally speaking, these figures were very comparable uh, to the, once doubled up, they were very comparable to the, the, the figures we audited in 2017 and 2018. The one number I'd like to bring to your attention here though is the third number from the bottom. It's changed in that position, and that has a balance of four million eight hundred ninety-one thousand. Uh, as, as I said before, we, when I, you know, so one of the themes is that they had strong um, operating results this year, and this figure would would would, 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 would reflect that. Um, there was a question about whether or not to reply to apply the four percent or the eight percent. Excuse me, how the eight percent rate of return requirement from the DPU should be applied. We reached out to an individual at the DPU and they told us that 8% was okay for the six month period and the department is below that 8% um, rate of return requirement uh, with that $4.9 million change in that position. If I could have you turn to page 10. This is the statement of fiduciary net position. And this is where your other post-employment benefits trust fund is presented. And that other post-employment benefits trust fund is uh, has a balance of three million five hundred sixty-one thousand. So these are the assets that have been set aside to fund your uh, your, your other post-employment benefits. And, and I think page forty-two, the last page of the report, presents this very cleanly. So if you jump to the last page of your financial statements, you'll see that the total. OPEB liability, I'm looking at the 2018 column, the total OPEB liability was $10,705,000. However, the department has put aside $3,561,000 towards funding that liability, which leaves a total unfunded OPEB liability of $7,144,000. So it's at about 33% funded. This is a very strong position for the department to be in. When comparing um, the funding of the other post-employment benefits uh, liability to towns, towns are generally well below 10% funded. So to be at 33% funded is, is a strong position. When comparing to other light departments, other light departments are anywhere between 25 to 40%. So to be at 33% is again is a strong position for the department uh, to, to be in. That concludes everything I wanted to, to bring to your attention here tonight. Um, again, uh, you know, in, in summation, again, the, the department did have positive operating results. It has a very well-funded OPEB trust fund, and there was no management hell. Yeah, just yeah. to give a quick update from the uh, audit committee, uh, both the town audit committee and the board's audit committee met before this meeting. 
Uh, we heard the same presentation that Zach has just given here tonight. Uh, both committees actually uh, voted to recommend that the board accept, uh, that the commission accept the uh, audit as presented. I just have one question for you. Yes, go ahead. It, it, it's a, maybe a future item. Do you see the new lease standard having an effect on the on department here? It should. So the, the leases are presented in a no disclosure um, right now. I believe that there is, uh, the department is a, a lessor and a lessee, mm -hmm. uh, both. So uh, it's going to be governmental accounting standards board statement number 87. And I believe that's not going to come into effect until fiscal or calendar year 2020. So you have some time for that implementation, but we'll certainly be working with management to ensure that the department can implement that uh, standard uh, when uh, okay. you know it, it's necessary to implement. Okay. Well, my second question is, is again another future future item. There's a new thing, as you're well aware of, key audit matters. Do you know have any idea any thoughts on whether that would be something the board should consider? as maybe a requirement as part of your report. To be honest with you, I'm not, I'm not sure what you're, uh, you're referring to. Is this a, a new standard that's out or? Yes, there's a new reporting standards where, you, where you'd have a separate paragraph in your opinion letter that you would bring to uh, manage, you bring to the, uh, the governing, the governing uh, people of key audit matters that took place in the audit, anything that's risky or something like that, and something like that. I don't know if that's, to, I don't even know if that's even applying to government. I'm not, I, 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 to be honest with you, Phil, I, I haven't, I'm, I'm unaware of that, um, you know, re regrettably so, but I can certainly look into it and get back to you, but as far as anything being overly risky or, or concerning with specific to the uh, Reading Municipal Light Department, I don't think that there's anything that, that would warrant that type of uh, disclosure, uh, and I think that's um, indicative of there not being a management letter. If there was something that, you know, maybe could be improved, mm -hmm. we, would, we would present that there. Uh, or if there was a risky transaction that the department was engaging in, we, we would bring that uh, to, to your attention in a management letter as well. Okay. All right. Very good. Mr. Chair? Uh, Zach, I'm not sure you covered it just now, but uh, if you did, don't repeat it, but can you talk about the month's cash on hand? Certainly. Because I so know that was an issue we talked about it last. Uh, yes, yeah, so if I could have you turn back to page 7. An industry standard in, in, um, in a guideline is to ensure that light departments have three months of operating cash on hand at all times. So what we do is we take the the first two numbers, um, the unreserved or excuse me, unrestricted cash balance, and then the receivable balance. So that's that twenty million eight hundred thirty-two dollars for unrestricted cash plus that eight million seven hundred five thousand for receivables. Excuse me and then subtract out accounts payable, which is about halfway down the page. And that has a balance of 9,718,000. What we do is we compare that to your, your, your operating cash and, and, and make sure that it's about three months worth. Currently, that ratio is at about 2.6. So you're a little lower than, than the expectation, but I would like to note that as of the June 30, 2018, that ratio is at 2.3. So the department is trending in the right direction to ensure that uh, it has enough operating cash on hand to cover three months of operating expenses. Good, thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else have questions or comments on the audit? Thank you. Karen, please, Karen Harris, please um, come on up and come on up. we got a microphone right here. Yeah, come over here. I'll just take this main plate around. Maybe we. <laughs> Make it a little bit more easy if people don't have to. Hold on. Mr. Chair, Karen Harris with uh, Sorry. Reading Finance and Institute. How are you? Here. Thanks for coming. I was wondering on page 18, um, I was wondering if, and I'm new to these accounts, um, and they're very different from what we do on the town side. Yep. I was wondering if there are industry standard metrics for these, uh, like the, de the depreciation actually spells it out. Whether there's standards for these and whether where we fit in the in how will we compare to light department other light departments? Yeah, that's actually that's I, I had a similar question in sort of how do we how do we, you, you you represent a bunch of light plants right? I do five or five to six municipal light plant audits a year. Okay, and then but the firm does more than that, right? Uh, no, I am the light department guy. <laughs> 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 the, the man. Okay. Well, man. I think the.
context, with the, the, the spirit of the question is, you know, how does this fit in? What are the standards? How, how do we? As far as like a cash position goes by, you know, restricted cash, whether it be depreciation cash, construction cash, I'm unaware of any industry standards, but I can certainly look into that for you. Um, I, I can tell you that comparative to the other light departments that I've looked at, the cash position for uh, the Reading Municipal Light Department is, 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 is in a better position uh, compared to contemporaries that, that I, I've looked at. You want to, is, is, would it be possible to go through the list and with that same perspective of how we would have these, or how we sit? I, to, to, I can tell you the, the ones that I do, but to specific um, yep. light departments and how you stack up against two specific light departments, I, I would be unable to do that at, okay. the, at this point, but I would be more than happy to do an analysis for you and, and let the board know where you stack uh, com compared to other light departments in, in the Commonwealth uh, compared to your cast positions. Well, we'll, we'll I, yeah, tell you, please. Yeah. Okay, some of these are related to policy, board policies that were in, uh, indicated um, Chuck could also speak to some of them. I mean, if when you become familiar with our fuel transactions, um, I can certainly write a little bit, and Wendy and I can write a paragraph and, uh, on each one of these or point you to the right policy of how that amount is established because it's, it's difficult to look at the number and then even compare it to other um, municipals if they don't have the types of transactions that we have for, say, purchasing fuel. Okay. So, I mean, I'm happy to do something like that for you. I mean, Zach can look at some comparisons, but I think you, you probably need to know how, how we establish them here first. How about you, if you want to send, send an email to us or yeah, to Colleen, and we can kind of okay. clarify what the question is and get answers. Yep. So. Okay. And, uh, and Zach, I'm assuming that most uh, munis set their own policies for That's correct. what they need for each one of these. All right, thank you, Karen. Mr. Chair? I think we are, unless okay. there's anything more. Okay. Uh, move that the Board of Commissioners accept the audit report from the Lansing Heath. Uh, fiscal year ended, uh, fiscal, uh, actually, probably not fiscal year, fiscal period, I, I think would be the right word there. Fiscal period ending uh, December 31st, 2018, as presented on the recommendation of the General Manager. Second. Okay. All in favor? And the motion carries five to zero. Yeah. Thank good. you very much. Thank you very well. Thanks, Zach. Thank you, Zach. And Thank you, Zach. Thank you. And the next up, we have uh, Colleen's report. Yeah, I'm going to make this short and sweet. I'm yep. just going to request um, uh, if I can attend the, uh, um, the NEPA, NEPA uh, conference. And mm -hmm. um, this year it's in New Hampshire. As you know, it circulates throughout New England. Also, if it were acceptable for me to go again, that um, we try to all coordinate of whoever's going, and, and we'll have Kathleen and Mind the Cab as well to contact yep. Tracy um, of who's going to attend. Do you have the dates there? Of the There's no set time. Oh, 18th to the 21st August. <laughs> August. <laughs> read the motion. I've already sure. Yeah. Um, I think, um, yes, please, uh, John. M move that the board approve. Ms. O'Brien's travel to and attendance at the NEPA conference to take place from August 18th to August 21st in Bretton Woods, New Hampshire. Second. Second. Okay. All in favor? Mm -hmm. Another 5 0 vote. Yeah. I've already, I've already booked the hotel, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it is. The whole community is usually up there, and it's a good opportunity to kind of, to yes. the point, to the last question, you know, we get to talk to the other commissioners and general managers around the state and really <laughs> learn a lot from each other. So it's a very, a very good event to attend, uh, and it's kind of the one thing that the commissioner is good at. Mm -hmm. Maybe we should be doing more of that. Um, okay, thank you, Colleen. And report from Chuck, um, integrated resources report. So I don't blow out the speakers at home. <laughs> Did that happen last time? <laughs> no, I was told that I was too quiet last time. Oh, really? So <laughs> I'm going to elevate. Okay, my step up oh. your game. Step up my game. Well, you do have a good uh, sort of radio presence, mm -hmm. well, TV you. presence. So, integrated resources report. So, uh, basically, I'm coming back on power supply. This is a very 
quick presentation because uh, we're tracking very well uh, against the budget. Uh, we're performing uh, better than uh, was budgeted. Uh, power supply costs in the market are lower. Uh, loads are down uh, due to a warmer uh, than anticipated uh, winter. Uh, while that's not uh, the best news for retail revenues, uh, it does uh, make my job a lot easier in, in, in the power supply arena because I don't have any surprises out there. Uh, we did just come off of the millstone outage and uh, everything is uh, back up, running and copacetic there. So uh, again, no surprises. Uh, what you see on this chart is uh, overall a favorable position of our actual results to budget. see that uh, we're tracking very well against energy costs. Uh, that is the largest single component and uh, one of the ones that's uh, most easy to get accurate because our, our contracts are, are fixed price. So uh, you don't see a lot of volatility there. Uh, next please. Uh, capacity costs, uh, again, tracking uh, very well. And finally, I believe we get to transmission. And uh, we see that uh, transmission costs are uh, also tracking uh, well enough. So that's our, our aggregate package. Uh, this is the uh, monthly summary. Uh, the uh, item that I would uh, call your attention to is the big red block in the middle, which is next era. Uh, it looks oversized but it is actually a combination of three separate uh, contractual arrangements that we have. Uh, we're working on breaking that up a little bit. We just began in March with the load following contract, and so I'm expecting that uh, with next month's report, we'll, we'll be able to provide a little more granularity in, in looking at that piece of it. Uh, the other thing that I would like to call your attention to uh, are market power transactions are the yellow band, and you will notice that they are below the line right now. What that means is that our loads were lower than expected, and we were uh, in turn uh, net sellers into the market uh, against our power contracts. Uh, so uh, you saw with the energy pricing, however, that uh, our costs are, are good. So not uh, a cause for concern. You'll also notice that the yellow band is relatively small. So uh, no uh, worries or concerns on my part as to load levels. What I wanted to show you here, this was a uh, screen capture uh, that we did uh, about a week ago. Um, the blue color that you see on the map is very unusual. There is uh, down on the bottom a rainbow scale for pricing and to be in the blue area one level up from indigo means that the price is $20 a megawatt hour uh, and this is what we were looking at midday uh, or uh, I can't quite read this uh, May, six, May 16 at 9.30 a.m. we're looking at $20 a megawatt hour. Uh, so this is very unusual. Uh, the prices are way down. Uh, this means that we are down running in the most efficient natural gas lines uh, that are out there. But I just wanted to, to capture that. Usually uh, May, starting to head into the summertime, uh, we're in the green blocks and uh, occasionally uh, maybe heading towards yellow. So this is just very unusual uh, time of year for us. And the colors signify cost. Uh, the colors are, are pricing blocks, yeah. yes. So the further to the uh, left on the color scale that we are, the lower the pricing blocks. And what do you attribute this to, Chuck? Uh, the fact that it's cooler weather. Uh, we <coughs> are essentially, uh, the term of art is thermally neutral. 
We have neither heating nor cooling going on. We're at about 60 to 65 degrees every day. Last Monday uh, was the abnormal kicker. We, we got up into the, the high 80s, and then immediately got rain and, and dropped back down. So with the rain activity and the temperatures being what they are, we're thermally neutral, uh, neither heating nor cooling. We're looking at uh, essentially process uh, energy, whether it's uh, residential, usage or uh, commercial and industrial, um, it's a low load period. It's the kind of load and price that we look for when the nuclear units go offline uh, so that we're not incurring replacement costs uh, any higher than, than necessary. So uh, I just thought this was an interesting mm. uh, demonstration yeah. of what actually is going on. On the Chuck Newman Tank Group? No. And then the next, yeah. the next piece of your, uh, you were going to update us on plans for June 20th, I believe. Is that yes. Um, I was asked uh, to update on two solar items. Uh, the first is that uh, the state has achieved a supplemental appropriation for. Uh, the statewide solar program. Uh, RMLD is a participant in that program. Uh, we budgeted a quarter of a million dollars as our matching component for that. Uh, the state's putting a quarter of a million dollars up in our service territory. And uh, under that program, we will pay customers $1.20 per kW of installed solar uh, on an approved solar project. This is a one year program. It temporarily replaces the under 25 kW uh, residential and small commercial program that we have now. The over 25 program uh, will stay in place as it is. Uh, this just uh, significantly increases uh, the uh, public investment uh, in solar. It is independent of uh, federal uh, tax credits and see how it goes. Uh, we had a backlog of, I think, five accounts uh, for, for this program. And uh, we're starting to push them uh, through. Energy New England is working uh, to help us uh, through the, uh, the rebate process and the documentation that uh, we're required to, uh, to produce for that program. Uh, the other I, uh, solar me. issue. Can I add something? Uh, just to add into that, so that's a maximum of 25 kW size on the rebate, correct? Yes. And, um, but not to exceed up to 50% of installed cost, correct? Yes. Okay. So uh, we're working on a press release on that, so it will go out. We're just putting the um, fine touches on it, and it's going to be out by tomorrow at noon time. So. Does this make it easier and it more affordable to do a project in the in our territory? It certainly makes it more affordable. Um, I don't know what kind of an impact the paperwork processing uh, is likely to have on that. Uh, and there is a qualification standard where they look at the uh, total uh, solar uh, impact or total solar strike, if you will, on the, the rooftop system. So that if you're sitting there nestled amongst uh, a number of trees and it reduces your solar potential, uh, you may have difficulty qualifying. Um, right. But, uh, yes. In, in theory, this will make it more advantageous and be uh, a more uh, interesting uh, program to consumers. Is it possible to give an a anecdote? Like, let's say there's a project that does meet all the shading and all other you know requirements. Whereas before you would have gotten X amount of money, now you're going to get what? What's the difference? A uh, 5 kW system would be eligible for up to a $6,000 rebate. A uh, 10 kW system for about a $12,000 rebate. And the typical system size for residential going in is 5 to 7.5 kW. And, and that those numbers compare to what before this program was created? 
those are those dollar figures you just go through. Um, I wanted to. It, we, it was one dollar uh, per KW with a maximum of two thousand. Okay. And so on our website, that particular rebate will just have a hold on it, mm -hmm. and it will say that this temporarily will be the new one yep. because it's only until funds run out. Right. And then we go we we revert back. So, in other words, the maximum you could get was two thousand, and now you can get as much as you could be getting six, eight, ten, twelve thousand dollars. Yes. No, you could get, you could get up to thirty thousand if you put in a twenty-five kW yep. that costs sixty thousand dollars to put in. Yep. If you did a dollar twenty times the twenty-five kW and it yep. cost you sixty grand to put it in, you could get up to thirty. Okay. But that would be the maximum. So it's, it's a dramatic, a dramatic, Very dramatic change. Yeah. From it's dramatic, yeah. and because it's a, it's you know we're getting grant, basically grant funding on on half. Yep. Um, well, that's that's great, and then and we're paying for the other half out of. Yeah, it comes out of our existing energy efficiency fund that we uh, we collect for. And this it's is not for an additional. I'm sorry. It's not additional. It's it's out of our fund. And this is for who's eligible for this? Anybody, any customer, any type of customer, or. As long as it's under 25 kW? Residential and small commercial building an under 25 kW system. Okay. Anybody who builds a 25 and over yep. uh, system would come under the Different. Uh, commercial program. Uh, given the size of those, they require individual review. Uh, they require engineering and operations to sign off that the uh, feeder uh, yep. capacity is there to support it. Uh, we look at economics of the project and they fall under uh, the existing description. So and what, and what is the, what's the name of the program again? Uh, is there a specific name or is it solar rebate program municipal light plan is the uh, the DMLP is the municipal okay. light plan uh, solar program. Thank you. But any type of customer who builds under 25 kW would be equally eligible yes. no matter what, what type of customer it is. Yes. That's great news. Um, so I, I assume that's a headline for the June twentieth solar workshop, which will, by the way, seven twenty p.m. Uh, seven twenty sorry, seven thirty p.m. on the twentieth of June. That's a a big item to talk about, uh, but not the only one. What did I say? No, six or six twenty at seven thirty. Six twenty at seven thirty. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's not July thirtieth at six twenty. <laughs> right. It is six. June twentieth. At 7:30, um, preceded by a brief regular. What did I say? No. You're just messing with yeah. my head. No. <laughs> um, pick a number. So yeah. It's coming up very soon. <laughs> there you go. And will be posted. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Less than a month. Okay. Uh, we're working on the agenda and the slides. Yes. Uh, that is a t that is a good b heading for it, though, right? The, this new program. The, the this lead will in be item. sure one yeah. of the topics. This is a great, well, it's great news, and um, and yeah, so you're, I know you're drafting a uh, agenda, and that's wonderful, so it's an opportunity for the public to come and learn about this complicated subject that a lot of people ask about from a lot of different directions, and thank you very much for, for doing this, and I hope the public will participate um, and, you know, learn something about what they can do, and with that, maybe we could, maybe we could, I don't know if there's a way to understand where do we sit in terms of our rates. That we give people who have solar, and is there a way to say what is our current? Because I know there's a level of solar penetration where it starts to kind of interfere with operations, which is a ways off. I know that's a concern long term. But where do we sit now in terms of solar penetration versus other municipalities or light plants? If there's a way to get a sense of that, so that you see where we are. Each light plant is going to be different. Wholesale marketing impacts are going to be uh, mandated by ISO, and so everybody will be under that constraint. Uh, internally, our engineering and operations division is looking at a feeder by feeder assessment of uh, the potential that we can take on before we have uh, issues right. internally. And the rule of thumb is I want to say in the, in the teens or 20% or something. Once you get into that zone, it starts to be. Yeah. yeah. And we're we're in the low single digits now. 
I mean, but even we're even less than aren't, aren't we just a one percent or something, one or two percent? We're, we're very. I mean, we're not anywhere near being close to. It's the number of customers. Is that what you're saying? Or the, or the percentage of our load that oh. it comes from solar okay. would be significantly less than one percent. I think at this time, right? Or can we, um, we can maybe? Yeah. Let us finish putting that Let's together and we'll yes. present it at the workshop. Good point. Um, fine. Enough said. It's a good tease. We, we will do the cover of these it's a big tease. in due time. Mm. Mm. You, you have to come to the meeting for the yeah. workshop. To get the yeah. answer to that question. Right. <laughs> yeah. Whatever yeah. that meeting is, <laughs> which is June 20th <laughs> at 7.30. <laughs> okay. We'll do a repeat on July 30th. Right? <laughs> yeah. um, okay. Thank you very much. Chuck, anything else? Anybody else? What do you like? <laughs> we, we need to move on. Yeah. We do. Uh, <laughs> well, if you stop yakking so much. I know. I know. I'm sorry. Joking it's still around. Yes, sir. Yes. yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. All right. You all set, Chuck? Or? Okay. Any comedians up next? Engineering and Operations, Amin Jafari. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Hello. So these are the major construction projects. Uh, the first two are out of the station four, which basically the getaway improvements. That's going to increase the ratings of the feeders. So uh, we're going to have more feeding capacity uh, to for contingency situations. Uh, grid modernization, scale make switches. Uh, we received those and we installed the first one that uh, the CY 2019. But we are ahead in schedule as far as F. Installed all of the switches that we received for yeah. FY the last time that you know we had the last, the last year budget meeting. Uh, the next slide shows uh, the project basically uh, uh, construction, the battery storage. Uh, I got a good news for you: the batteries are online, running. Uh, we basically shred the peak uh, on May 20th. We ran it between the hours of 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. That was supposed to be the test, but the test was done successfully. So we uh, shaved 1.9 megawatts. Wow. In addition to that, we ran the generator and we added another 2.5 megawatts. So we managed to, you know, to catch the transmission peak nice. right on time. Mm. So the savings you're going to see that in uh, in two months actually. Great. So congratulations. I guess congratulations to you. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Please mark your, your calendar for July 10th. Yes. The ribbon cutting. What time of day? So the project was ahead of the schedule. It was supposed to go online June 1st, but we are ahead of the schedule. It's done, and then, you know, so it's operational. So moving forward, we're going to. It's a great, great project. Yeah, it was great. It was, we all enjoyed it. It was, it was a team effort. Uh, major construction projects. Uh, you see that this is another one of those maintenance areas, the big that, you know, uh, we started back in 2015, and we're replacing, upgrading these uh, pad mount switch gears. And the ones that you see on the left, these are the ones on Johnston Road that uh, they were old and antiquated, they rusted. And the ones you see on the right, these are the ones that you know we replaced them with. This is this is the industrial area that you know for the reliability. We're going through these and upgrading uh, as needed. This is aging uh, infrastructure that you know to upgrade. <coughs> we also uh, ordered six more that they're coming in for uh, uh, 2019, and uh, we got a total of 25 of those. And so far, we've replaced like about six of them. So we got 19 more to go, but those 19s they're not as in top shape as these that you know were on the high priority list. So we catching up and we making progress on the maintenance. Uh, the next slide shows the area upgrade projects. These are the uh, UR 
are these, the underground facilities that we, again, we have identified like uh, 65 uh, areas that, you know, on the list of the uh, areas that they need to be upgraded. Uh, that means upgrading the cables, the transformers, the riser poles and everything. And as we go on, on the list, the priorities, you know, we upgrading them based on the oldest uh, to, to the newest, which should be not more than, you know, uh, uh, 10 years old. <coughs> so uh, we completed the Gloria Lane in North Reading. Uh, the step down area upgrades, that's another maintenance area big that we go through these communities uh, that, you know, we have these old step down areas and upgrade them from A to Z. The overhead primaries, the transformers, the secondaries, the connections, uh, which this is my favorite project because we go through it all, basically. Mm. Uh, from the poles all the way to the service connections to, to the houses and the, you know, the customers. This particular one included one pole mount transformer and four pad mount transformers, which uh, they were all upgraded. And uh, I'm happy that you know, we got, got a chance to do that. And uh, that was in Essex Street, Linfield. Most of these old areas are in Linfield and uh, some in Reading, and uh, we got a few in North Reading. Uh, Wilmington is fairly new. The next one is shows the list of maintenance programs, you know, and basically we are on target. And in some of them we are uh, basically ahead of the schedule based on what we planned. So it's moving really great in, in a good direction. <coughs> and we inspecting the feeders, the feeders, you know, the guys, you know, in rainy days, they go out and patrol the lines, making sure that, you know, there are no signs of, you know, uh, troubles. And if there are, we schedule them and we uh, repair, make the repairs. The next slide is my best slide because, uh, you know, most people, they don't like to see these double poles, as I <laughs> always mentioned, and I do appreciate the, you know, the, the valued customer's patience. <coughs> But uh, that shows that, you know, RMLD is uh, working and, you know, we are continuously upgrading the areas. So it shows that in the mm, in most areas we caught up with the double poles. Uh, in the highest that we have is in North Reading, 16 of them. But uh, this is a moving target. Every, you know, time that I give you a report, these numbers go up, down, up, down as we upgrading the poles and upgrading the areas uh, to based on the maintenance plan that we have. So that's uh, basically it. The next slide shows the reliability indices. We are doing great. I mean, all the reliability indices are well below the national and regional averages. Uh, Reading's re reliability, no, uh, RMLD's reliability is one of the best top in New England area. I can mm -hmm. give you, I tell you that with confidence. And it's uh, the result of the maintenance that, you know, we've been doing and we started doing and catching up lots of troubled areas. And, you know, we, uh, it's getting better and better. And I'm hoping that these uh, bars, they go close to zero, you mm -hmm. know, before my retirement is coming. <laughs> 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 the next one is showing you the outages. And Mr. Hennessy, I listened to your comments last time. Oh, yeah. You wanted to see that, you know, comparison apples to apples. You're right. We had annual, and this time the bar, the blue bar, shows the year to date, five years average. Great. And the red bars basically are showing where we are year to date. That's excellent. So that's a better representa representation of days, I guess. You see that uh, we have red, we have had more weather I I incidents and uh, some unknowns, but the rest of them, pre and motor vehicle accidents so far, uh, it's, it's pretty much the same. Uh, the rest of that is, uh, you know, we're doing well below. So again, the first three ones, they show that, you know, basically the maintenance, the as we keeping up with the maintenance, the equipment failures, they should be going down, and, you know, the tree trimming is working. That's indication that, you know, our program is, uh, is a good program. It's working. And uh, wildlife, we catch it on as we go on and we rebuild these the areas that the, the we add more and more on, on the system. Mm -hmm. the Can I ask, uh, sure. David, ask one question? Um, the equipment, why such a dramatic um, reduction in equipment out cost?
causes this year? Because you're averaging 16 per year yeah, to this point per right, year, and all of a sudden there's only three this year. Well, I like what I said, the result of the mentor. We've replaced um, lots of transformers. The, we have a transformer replace program, mm -hmm. replacement program. That's you know, for the age, the transformers that we're replacing. Um, so far, we are ahead of the schedule for the year. But every year, we replace anywhere between... Uh, you know, so that's what you think this is, is transformer of replacement? Of that. That's yeah. Transformer replacements, switch upgrades, these uh, underground uh, you know, areas that we've been upgrading so we have less cable failures. I mean, we are not out of the woods yet, mm. but you know, we are in the right direction. At least it tells yeah. me that you know, the plans that we, we have, they're working, we don't have to alter them. Okay. You know, so I think, I think the five-year yeah. plan can maybe consider some of the deferred maintenance in years before the five years. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I think in the past, uh, the maintenance was the transformer would blow and then you'd replace it. Uh, yeah. As opposed to <laughs> right. you know, doing something proactive, <laughs> which is what the department is doing. Yeah. Now. yeah. The That's great. The administration now is this much is more proactive yeah. going forward. Well, it's good to see if the results show. Absolutely. Yeah, it's pretty dramatic. Yeah. That was my deal with Colleen before I come over. I said that, you know, I don't, I'm not the type of guy who, you know, <laughs> use <laughs> the band aid approach. <laughs> exactly I fix it all if you give me the money. Yeah. <laughs> and thanks to the that? board for, you know. And you agreed to that? <laughs> <laughs> we did it in Danvers. It worked. It yeah. worked. Mm -hmm. you know? yeah. yeah. And thanks to the board for approving, you know, the budget because, you know, this is what the result of, you know. Well, it's an excellent use of leadership funds. and letting us to. Right, because it also leads to economic development. Yes. You don't have a reliable power right. supply. Right. You know, and that's our goal. Yeah. That's exactly what we're trying to do. Reliability for our customers as well as attracting more businesses in other areas. Exactly. And also, if there's a big a Category 3 hurricane that blows through, the damage might be relatively less. Right. Because you've done more to protect. The poles are in better shape. There's fewer big limbs overhanging transmission or mm -hmm. distribution lines. But that's hard to measure. But it's a big benefit. Mm -hmm. <coughs> well, Columbia Gas can measure it. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that is kind of a yeah. that is an example, right? It, it, it's a perfect example. You never know when it's going to happen. Yeah. Right. Yep. <coughs> so, and I guess the last slide shows the how we do on the spending. You know, so we are almost for the first quarter we spent 1.2 uh, million almost out of a 7.8 million that budget. So we are moving right along. That concludes my report. <laughs> if you have any questions, by all means. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Hamid. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Love the new chart. Thanks again. Yeah. Good. Yeah. You're welcome. Anytime. But by all means, if you'd like to see, you know, the reports differently, I would, you know, welcome any yeah. comments, anything that you want me to, you want us to add. We'd be more than happy to add or take off or whatever. If you're happy with the, the way that it's being reported. We continue the. Uh, the I, I think they're great. I really yeah. do. I think the, uh, yeah. the pictures are very good. It really helps bring a sense of reality to what yeah. we're doing, and, and the charts and graphs for all the presentations have improved dramatically in the last, I'd say, just two years. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, the determination. You, yeah, we got the. We got one. Uh, I guess. Uh, Determination, uniqueness for the proposed uh, acquisition of the land uh, on Route 125. So uh, that's something that the board needs to uh, <coughs> vote on. And basically, what this is is uh, basically you you are voting to waive the advertising, uh, but not the uh, the central register. It's still, it's going to go in the central register, which all the bids and contracts for the municipal municipalities as well as the counties <coughs> and the state. The whole state is going to the central register, so we're still gonna go to the central register and uh, uh, advertise it there. But the local advertisement, you know, I guess uh, needs to be. Uh, we don't need to do that. That's gonna take a month away, and we need to proceed with the uh, PNS with national grid. Uh, the letter of intent is signed and agree uh, both parties. So we are proceeding to the next step, which is environmental assessment phase one and then if everything comes out uh, to be okay then we're going to proceed with the purchase and sales with contingencies uh, that you know well if we get the permit permitting of uh, all the states and all the regu regulatory uh, so basically
basically the, the, what the, what makes this one a unique, uh, basically a, the determination of uniqueness, is where the, the, the system, the land is, or the parcel is situated yep. abutting the 115 KB lines. Yep. There are not too many parcels that they're right uh, It's a great spot. Yeah, it's a mm -hmm. great spot. I agree with Understood. you. Understood. And uh, also the interconnection to the uh, to the uh, national grid system. Yep. So that's what makes it unique. Okay. I think we're yep. Incredible. You did the same thing for the other parcels, so we're just doing it for this Understood. parcel. Understood. I think we've had a fair amount of discussion about it, and it's yeah. a great, been a great so effort. Uh, so, John, you want to give me? We'd be happy to do that. Um, move that the RMLD Board of Commissioners approve the determination of uniqueness of property and waive the publication requirements of Mass General Laws Chapter 30B, Section 16, with respect to the acquisition of land located off Andover Bypass Street, Route 125, in Wilmington, Mass, 01887, and identify it on the Town of Wilmington Assessor's Map in Book 891, page 15, on the recommendation of the General Manager. Second. Second. Yeah, thank you. Uh, all in favor? Any way discussion? Well, I guess we're voting. Yeah. I think we were ready to vote. Yeah. 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 Thank you so much. Okay, so that was a 5 0 vote, just to be clear. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Hamid. Thanks. Any questions? Mm -hmm. Mr. Chair, um, can I request that Chuck come back up and just do a quick uh, community Please. Uh, management uh, update? tonight to sing happy birthday <laughs> yeah. to mm -hmm. RMLD. Yeah. Uh, we were 125 years old on May 21st. Yeah. Uh, we put out a press release letting everybody know that mm -hmm. we're 125 years old. Um, and we have posted some uh, things. It's only one third of the year, the age of the town. Something like exactly. that, yes. Exactly, exactly. Had some fun, uh, actually, and, and, and I don't know if we should be telling the uh, commission that the employees had some fun, <laughs> but um, we had the opportunity to dig through uh, the vaults, if you will, and, and some of the boxes, and uh, found some historic artifacts, uh, photos, and, and things. Uh, we created a video uh, by our uh, communications manager, uh, Joyce Mulvaney. She did an excellent job with it. It is posted on the RMLD website. Uh, she also came up with a timeline with a number of uh, events uh, that she was able to uh, incorporate, including uh, where we moved to different locations. So 125 years ago, uh, we were uh, next door. Uh, <laughs> and in 125 years, we have come full circle. <laughs> we're back where we started, yep. uh, if you will. So uh, those are out there. Uh, we encourage people to look at those. And um, this year uh, we have launched the high school art contest. Uh, the theme for this will be the 125th anniversary. Yeah. So uh, nice. uh, we, we have that going also nice. for the community activity. Uh, we, we did discover some advertising materials from – around 1920 or so, uh, we were able to find one that uh, we, we could use. The rest were somewhat politically incorrect. <laughs> uh, today, oh, well, I see them by all we decided not to, uh, to use those. But, uh, uh, those of you who wish to view them, uh, they, they are in a pile of invoices out there.
sense. Yeah. 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 And so I, I just wanted to be sure that that correction was good to hear. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that is good to know. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Chuck. May I add one more note, please? Please. <coughs> So we're not, I mean, other than what was done on the video uh, to celebrate, we're actually delaying our birthday party till our open house since we have a full week of appreciating all of the benefits of public power that we'll probably try to schedule something on that Thursday. Uh, Joyce will send some things out so that it'll be maybe between, we're hoping to have a board meeting that night so between the open house and the board meeting that maybe we could have something uh, to help celebrate. And as well, I, we've gotten Joyce in contact with the town, and they're um, getting ready for the 375th, so we'll be participating in some of those events. Uh, so we, it should be fun to have some celebrations for the year, but look forward to ours in October then. Will we have enough cake for all of our customers? Yeah, we will. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Barbie, so Barbie doll size cupcakes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. There you go. Are you volunteering? Yeah. I will get him a voice coach. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, that, that's a condition for the tech. <laughs> um, okay. okay, I think next meeting. Are we all? Yeah. Are we good? We're good. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Chuck. Any Thanks, more discussion Chuck. on any matters? Yeah. No? no? Okay, then I think we're just we're going to reiterate uh, the dates of our next meeting, which is Thursday, June 20th, 2019, and Thursday, July 18th, 2019. Okay. And CAB meeting the 19th of June uh, with Tom covering and John's covering the July meeting. Um, so just a question. So we're starting at 7 for a regular board meeting and then the, the workshop, the solo workshop, workshop really will start 7 at 7.30. What did we say? Start at 6.30 or 7? Uh, we're going to. And what do you think you need? Is 7 enough? Half an hour to get the business taken care of before? So we could do seven. Have a meet and greet first, um, from six thirty to seven. Because that was the uh, concept we were. Right. Then that would be a little awkward then to make people sit for half an hour while we get to do stuff. So. Well, we can. We could flip it around if you want to have a meet and greet and then do the meeting, the workshop between seven and eight, and then well, do the do regular that? session. Yeah. You know, and then it's a hard stop at eight. But I, I you sense. know, or eight thirty. Sure. Well, what if we just do the meeting at the 7:30s, which we usually do, meet and greets beforehand. Then we have the workshop until 7:30 to 9 or 11, and then we can do our business at the end. Say that by me again. It just means okay. that we're going to do the solo workshop right at the beginning of the meeting. Oh, that's why what not? I that's what I said. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, that's what I thought you said. But that you said only a half an hour for the workshop, but it probably would take longer than that. Wouldn't you think if we go at eight? No, I said uh, a meet and greet at 6:30, yes. and then start your regular board meeting. Is the workshop yes. between uh, seven to eight or eight thirty, okay. and then you know yes. whatever we have on the session, yep. eight thirty to nine, then executive session if we you know, yes, agree have something like that. So now, but the the key thing is that we're starting the meeting at seven, not at seven thirty. I think that would be appropriate if you want to okay. fit everything yeah. in. Yeah. Okay. Good. I think so. Okay. Fine. Yeah. But we can arrive at six thirty because there'll be a lot of people coming yeah, in. Yeah, I think we're 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 talking about having some. Uh, tripod set up with some interesting pictures to just take a look at and you know just from light refreshments and people can mingle and and get their uh, formulate their questions uh, no one is allowed Dave you're not allowed to give any answers before we come to the workshop <laughs> um, and then we'll come in and, and uh, Chuck will do the presentation probably about 15 or 20 minutes and then we can open it up for questions or however you'd like to do it that's how I'm envi that's envisioning that's yeah, that sounds good and as part of that <coughs> Meet and greet. Would there be images of other projects that have happened, you know, both in our territory and elsewhere? Um, we can talk about that. Yes. Yeah, we can talk about that as well. Yeah. How we want to address that. Yeah, I think uh, I'm not saying an hour is right or wrong. I think the key question is how long should the workshop be? Because the rest of it can, you know, how long our meetings are. Sure. Half hour, you know, meet and greet is good. So is it an hour meeting? Is it longer? I don't know. I mean, I so think we should allow, by the agenda, allow an hour and a half for it. If we don't need it, should then we move it earlier. Yeah, yeah. So we can start the stuff yeah. earlier. But let's allow at least 90 minutes for the workshop. Yeah. I mean, to, yeah. Do, yeah. to go through it all. And we don't need it. We don't need it. We don't need yeah. it. But yeah. Yeah. Be I think here. so because you don't have them that often. So. Yeah. Right. I mean, um, and 
maybe it shouldn't even be two hours, but. Segmented, right. So my question is, how are we going to get the word out? It has to be posted, right? I mean, yeah. Right, because it will just be at the end. Exactly. How are we going to get the word out? Uh, we have, a, you know, Joyce is working on the communications to be sent out. Um, we have a preliminary invitee list that uh, I'll be sharing with Dave. We're going to go over some of the logistics. Uh, but I figured we'd do that offline between Dave and I of, of what we've come up with. Um, Maybe we should get a door prize or something to attract people. A door prize. Like a, uh, like a, a raffle? Like the door. <laughs> <laughs> we'll give people a door. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. I like what you're thinking. We'll think of something fun for uh, yeah, some, right. some small little raffle to. Perhaps some, never mind. Um, <laughs> okay, good. Um, um, move on? Yes, that's probably a good idea. Yes. Executive session? Yeah, go ahead, um, Move that the board go into executive session to consider the purchase of real property to discuss confidential, competitively sensitive, and proprietary information in relation to making, selling, or distributing electric power and energy, and to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining and return to regular session for the sole purpose of adjournment. Second. Second. Okay. All in favor? Do we do a roll call on this one? Yeah. Mr. Pacino, aye. Mr. Hennessy, aye. Mr. Talbot, aye. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, that uh, that uh, temporarily adjourns this meeting.